Well, good morning and thank you very much for joining us. I am Yori Fulani. Hope you had a great weekend. Well, our guest this morning is uh, Engineer Nuruddin um, Haman Yebo. He's a retired naval officer. He's also an APC chieftain. So the first thing, of course, is to thank you uh, for making yourself available. Uh, good morning to you, Engineer Nuruddin. Good morning and thank you for having me. Okay. Um, now, the war against, and this is where we might be able to tap into your, you know, experience and knowledge of uh, naval systems, the Navy, and what it takes. Uh, as you know, the President has recently issued uh, a fresh order to the Chief of Defense Staff that they have to take out all the difficulties that we are having, um, really, the le and not the least of which is oil theft. The President has said that they have to deal with it, and indeed the authorities at that meeting have said that um, results would be seen very, very shortly uh, as a result of this. Now, uh, Engineer Nuruddin Haman Yabo, Yabo um, you as a retired military officer, you will agree with me that these are not new directives. They have been one thing or the other. Maybe I should ask you, what is it that we've been missing but now, all the service chiefs and all the related communities are saying that um, this will be over in a very short time. What, are, what have been the difficulties? Uh, first of all, there has to be uh, the, the issues surrounding the difficulty in our maritime uh, um, sector particularly um, with, with regard to oil theft, is not an issue of one agency. It's not just the Navy because it has to, you need to look at it from a multidimensional uh, point of view. The, the Navy, as, as, as a member of the armed forces, have their role to play. You, you have the NEMASA, which is uh, a civil organization, have their own role to play. They are a critical stakeholders in, in, in the maritime industry. So all these agencies will need to understand their role to play and, collab and collaboratively when they come together. And again, there will be meaningful results. And again, remember, we are in the Gulf of Guinea. So there are neighboring countries as well whom their lack of you know, maybe not doing well in their own capacity to consequently affect Nigeria in the, in, in the maritime domain. So I think it's not just a Nigerian thing. We need to also extend our hands, extend our hands beyond the Nigerian, you know, border so that our, our neighbors in the, in, in the Gulf of Guinea can as well be adequately equipped. Because today, if you look at uh, in, in Nigeria, every time we talk about security, we hinge it on on, man, on, on, the, on the strength of, of, of personnel and firepower, which is, which is okay, which is okay. But at the same time, we need to also look at what, are, what is the state of those personnel? What is their mor moral state before they delve into this issue of handling you know, the, the, the security issues? Do you, do you just, because you have a large number or you have the adequate uh, firepower, it means you can do your work? No. We need to address a lot of things. And now that the, the president is coming with a renewed hope, you know, to really support these armed forces and carry out their responsibilities uh, uh, and, and their mandates, then we as well have to look at issues that internally affect the, the, the personnel who in turn will carry out these duties. And this brings me to a point where I will express um, issues of welfare and, and the personnel's morale. Because if you look at today, keep even the, the issues of oil theft aside, as much as, as important as it is, we have what is happening today even with the police. The, we, we expect the police to do their, 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 their civil policing adequately, be efficient and effective, however they lack basic things to carry out this responsibility. So we need to, not only, and again, if you, if you know, the police also have a role to play in, they are also one of the critical stakeholders in the maritime industry, because you have the marine police. So all, we, there has to be a total review of this process. The, the personnel have to be adequately taken care of, taken care of in the sense that they are, 
their morale must be boosted. Their welfare will have to be adequately taken care of. Um, today, we have challenges in the military that seek to undermine the state of personnel and you know, restrict them from attaining to courses or appointments or holding on to good uh, offices because of their mode of entry. These are, these, these are fundamental issues that need to be addressed uh, by the armed forces. Okay. And the president you, you know, I'll tell you something. I'll, I'll tell you something, Engineer Nuruddin. Um, th that bit that yeah. you've just uh, uh, spoken about now, that's a surprise to me because um, Nigeria as a country has never stinted on um, provisions for the military, the armed forces. Um, so I'm a, maybe the rest of us who, you know, are not uh, uniformed people or retired from there um, might not really understand that. Uh, it doesn't, most people do not have the understanding that uh, the, 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 the military forces lack anything that they need. Of course, we, you, you, you know, if you, if, t t take, believe you me, if you like half a million members of the armed forces, if you like have the best of uh, um, uh, standard facilities, uh, equipment of the art, deploy them, you will see lapses so long as these persons are not adequately taken care of. If you see most of the countries today we look at, developed countries, or even perhaps places we, we borrowed these traditions from, the reason why you see efficiency in the personnel carrying out their duty is because they have been adequately taken care of. You don't just send a soldier to go and do his work while he is thinking that when his wife gets sick, it will be his own problem. Or when it is time for him to pay school fees, it will be his own problem. Believe you me, these are things that we all know as a people in this country. And it is what is affecting security too, and it's fundamental, it has to be addressed. And that is why I'm talking about the, in the armed forces, particularly, particularly in the armed forces, because it's my constituency, I have a, a good knowledge of it, and as well advocate that it, they, are, they should be adequately equipped so that they carry out their responsibility. However, at the same time, these same armed forces should be checked, because if we allow the armed forces to, that is seen to, we also uniting this country are one of, and one of the pillars that keep this country together, but internally they create disunity among their officers and men, then there's a problem. Because I tell you, now there are proposals by the armed forces, even though there was a lame disclaimer to it, but I want to tell you there is no smoke without fire. They have proposed to the president on a harmonized terms and condition of service that seek to hold back officers because of their mode of entry into the service. And again, Clearly, with facts, I can tell you today, we have officers who have not attained courses because of their nature of commission. We have officers who will seek to stay, who, are, who, who will be made to stay in a particular rank for years because of their nature of commission. We have officers who cannot be appointed to certain offices or hold on to some positions because of their nature of commission. And this is not good for the system. Until most of these things are reviewed, there is no way you get efficiency of the service. And the president should also, as a matter of urgency, review these things like we have the police service commission. Today in this country, you know we have the Police Service Commission. I can give you a clear case of what happened with the former ADC to, 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 uh, to Aisha Buhari. When he had some slight issues with the, with, uh, the First Lady, he was, he was suspended from her ADC, but some big uh, people around the, the, the power then wanted him out of the police, but the Police Service Commission was there to protect him. So if the, the, the armed forces on their own are demonstrating their inefficiency to handle their personnel, provide a level playing ground for, for officers to thrive based on capacity and merit, then the presidency should as well re review these things and even establish maybe the Armed Forces Service Commission that will seek to bring back retired officers that have the interest of the country at heart and the Armed Forces to manage this commission so that we we'll address these basic issues. Then we can now begin to talk about their efficiency you know, at sea, in the air, or on land. Because otherwise, if you don't handle this thing, I am telling you, we'll continue to waste our time as a people, and the president needs to know all these things. It's a good thing that he has demonstrated his willingness to, to, to make sure that the armed forces do their work. But he, need, he also has to know that there are basic issues that are holding 
the, the emphasis from doing this thing, and one of it is what I just mentioned, and that has to be looked at critically and addressed as a matter of urgency so that it will help because somebody going to work knowing that he has to deliver for the country, however, when he finished doing his work, there is no reward to it. Like people used to say, re, uh, uh, loyalty without reward is slavery. So I think the president needs to look at that. Good Nigerians will have to sit down and come together. The police have to be adequately taken care of. Look at how many barracks today do we have in Nigeria that is dilapidated. And yet we every time tell police people not to be corrupt. You cannot just give somebody a rifle with a magazine fully loaded. You keep him on the road for hours. And again, he, he can't even feed himself. How do you then justify that this man should not be corrupt? I'm not, I'm not promoting uh, somebody being corrupt. But again, at the same time, I have to be fair to the man on the other side. So the same thing for the armed forces. We really have to be fair. We really have to be, you know, have a sincerity of purpose in our dealings with this country because the president has re-energized us. He has given us a clear sign that he wants to fix this country and good people should support him at different levels so that he achieves his mandate. And that is what I have to say on this. Um, you know, a couple of things came up from me. Uh, for me, uh, in what you've just said. Um, first of all, as the president, we've just been talking about that, has issued a fresh order of uh, zero tolerance for all the wastefulness, the criminality, the vandalism that has been going on uh, against our key, core uh, asset. Um, that's what we've been talking about. Now, all of these things that you've also just explained, um, it, it can be a bit confusing because this was a meeting with the very, very highest level uh, in our security architecture, uh, you know, very, very close. So we're talking there about the chief of defense staff. And um, does what you have said, does it, does it not imply that they do not, from the president on down, they do not actually have a good lie of the ground. They don't actually understand um, how the ground lies is why they can be making those orders. And you are saying that there are other aspects uh, to it, such as you have enumerated. Uh, that can be a bit confusing to people that, look, those who should know, those are the people we were holding meetings with. For instance, even all, all that you have said, I imagine that perhaps the chief of defense staff and um, all these other big, big guns, um, will know a fair bit about that situation and then some. So uh, how, 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 do you, uh, how do you rationalize this situation? The, they, they, are, they are administratively considered as... Um, officers who give instructions. Now, if you look at, does the, does the, does the chief of defense staff go to the field? No. Does the chief of naval staff or the chief of air staff or army staff go to the field? Hardly. Except in few cases, like you see in, in the past government and even this current chief of army staff, in some cases he has demonstrated to the personnel, and this is to boost their morale, he go and be with them in the field. However, it is a rare gesture. Most of it is their administrators, and they, lie on their, they rely on their field officers for the discharge of this responsibility. And that is why I'm telling you there are fundamental issues. And these fundamental issues has to be addressed. Knowing what the problem is, my brother is wanting. Then having a way to address it is another thing. And that way to address this problem is not just giving instruction to somebody who you have provided, be it a ship on the water or a jet on the air or some tanks on the land. This is not the case. The case is, have you provided that person with the moral capacity? You know, have you taken the welfare of that person that will, that will enable him to do his work? Which is a critical question we should be asking and find out good answers. Otherwise, I'm saying knowing the problem is not just the solution. You must have to Find out how to solve the problem, with who to solve the problem, before you go about doing it. And that okay. issue I am talking about is fundamental, and it has to be addressed. Let it be addressed now, now, critically knowing, that... Knowing the problem, uh, as you implied, 
it is not the entire solution, but it's an important part of um, the solution. Knowing the problem is an important part of the solution. And um, I, I, you know, I, I take what you have just been saying because, um, uh, first of all, you're an analyst, you're a retired naval officer, uh, you're an APC chieftain, uh, and that brings me to, for instance, um, the role, because at those meetings uh, that I was just referring to, they, uh, much was said of the fact that this is not something for the military to do exclusively. Everybody, even civilians, um, have a hand in this. So the question I was now going to ask is, why, um, the question I wanted to put is, if that is indeed this, the case, the people part of it, give me your impressions on the role that politicians allegedly play in making the situation as intractable as it has been all this while. So much so that the pre president has, as we've spoken about, recently uh, you know, reissued uh, a long-standing order. Come again. I can't. OK, you, you couldn't hear. Um, I, I, I was yes. wondering. I was wondering that, um, so you are implying now um, that we might not have a full grasp of the matter, such as you have explained. Uh, people don't know the concerns of those servicemen, and um, if those concerns could be adequately addressed along the lines that you have spoken of, we will get much better results. So whatever is preventing that, I guess that's still blowing in the wind, uh, we could talk about that. My, my sort of um, inquiry now uh, is, how about the role of politicians, allegedly? Uh, because you said, uh, not, not you, but the meeting also noted that, um, you know, we, we, it's not a matter for the military alone. So when we come, to, if it's not for the military alone, when we're talking about uh, civilians, invariably they will be politicians. Uh, tell me your take as an APC chieftain you know, in Adamawa, I believe, as an APC chieftain. Tell me your take on the role of politicians in all of this. Uh, thank you very much. Um, the role of politics, I will tell you, ordinarily, ordinarily, the role of politics should have, you know, outlined these issues and then, because it will form part of the president's or the party manifesto, even the president come to power, even before the party takes over power. And sincerity of purpose, sincerity of purpose is key to us addressing this issue. So politicians across board, we need to be sincere with this country. We need to listen to, look at things the way we are supposed to look at them because it's not, if today, if you check all the services have some political um, committees around them one way or the other. In the, in, at the defense level, you have the Senate Committee on Defense, you have the, the, uh, the, the Senate Committee on Army, Navy, and Air Force. So cut across, there are a lot of committees down to the reps. So if there is a sincerity of purpose, if we really understand what this problem is, and the armed forces too are providing the adequate information to these politicians that will look at, analyze, and give a very good solution to the problem, because as it stands today, democracy has come to stay, and that is why people like me, who is who was in the military, resigned, and now in actively participating in politics, have the opportunity and the privilege to sit here and discuss about these challenges. Ordinarily, if it were maybe in the military era, I wouldn't have done that. But again, okay. what I'm saying one, is the sincerity of purpose. One moment. I beg your pardon for interrupting you because um, Festus in Ketu has called in for a while. Uh, good morning to you, Ketu, uh, Festus in Ketu. Thank you for holding no, on. Good, good morning, sir. Is Festus from Ikorodu? Okay, I beg your pardon. Festus in Ikorodu. Good morning. Yes, sir. Good Please morning, go ahead. Sir. Yes, sir. Uh, I want to contribute to your program. Sure, sure. So, uh, uh, this oil theft issue you are discussing today is a very interesting topic. 
I am a Niger Delta man. I come from Niger Delta. And uh, I want to let you know that until politicians remove their hand from stealing our food oil, because all these things you are seeing today are being done by politicians. If, you, if I, I wish the Mr. President can go to Niger Delta by himself and see what is happening. The rate at which they are moving the crude oil, being guided by security personnel with convoy, you will be shocked, Uncle Yori. A lot of things are happening. Politicians are the ones stealing our crude oil in Niger. I, am, I come from Niger Delta. I live in the Kurudu and I know what I'm telling you. The day politicians will stop to steal our crude oil, that is the day all this oil theft will end. And, and uh, the way I see this country, anybody that wants to rule this country and rule it well, must be ready to deal with people. Mr. President, to rise up to the re his responsibility and come to Niger Delta and see what is happening. Politicians conniving with local, local militants, with security personnel, are the ones stealing this food oil. We can't continue like this. The crime is increasing every day by day. They will steal it. Nobody's been arrested. You can never see that one person has been arrested. We can't continue like this. And I, I'm, I'm begging on Mr. President to look into a year theft. He should please look into it. And we will find out that those who are doing it are people around him. They are not far from him. Thank you, sir. And God bless you. Thank you very much uh, for calling in. Okay. Uh, back to you, Engineer Nuruddin Hamanyebo. Uh, you heard that. Uh, there's a matter of, there's even a trust deficit, you know. Even you yourself, as you are speaking, you're a politician. Um, the, uh, what, the extent to which you will go, as you know, that is also a concern uh, in, in speaking Look, Mr. Yori, I, I, I agree, I agree with, with some of the things this guy said, and I want to let you know. And that's why I said there are critical stakeholders in managing this issue. Today, tell me on what ground can you justify giving a, a, a company like Tantita to manage our, our, our pipeline? This is, this is absolutely a, 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 um, a, 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 how do I put it, a, a lost you know, investment. I will not call it a, a, west, a wasted investment because, yes, he was, a, he was a militant. Yes, he has you know, he has agreed to, to, to lay down arms. He has been, you know, recalibrated okay. into the society. But so, is so that you, enough? You, Does he have... You don't the... support, I beg your pardon, you don't support private security firms like Tantita uh, being involved in this whole effort? I don't, I don't. I, if, if I'm to support Tantita, I should support Tantita in, in providing native intelligence support our security uh, uh, architecture. Remember, we have the DSS, we have the police, we have the Navy, we have the Army, we have the Air Force. These are competent, you know, uh, uh, military uh, uh, apparatus that when provided adequately with the, with the desired uh, equipments they so desire to, to combat this crisis, they will do their job. You know, that is the sincerity of purpose I'm talking about. But today, we have someone like um, Tantita managing our pipeline security. And if you remember, I, I saw when the, the same NMPC that gave the contract are complaining of wasting so much money, yet the issue is not addressed. So who is deceiving who? We need to be fair to this country. We need to be honest with this country. It's not helping matters. Allow the security uh, uh, apparatus to do their job and do it very well. Provide them the necessary equipment to do their job. Because if okay. you ask that, and that's why I'm complete. telling you it, it's let, let, let me get another contribution. Good morning, Mr. George. Thank you for holding on. Mr. I'm George uh, in Lagos. Good morning. Thank you for holding yes, on. Can you hear me? Yes, we can hear can you. Can you hear me? Uh, yes, they okay. will make it louder, but I can just barely Good manage. Good morning, Uncle Yori. Good morning, sir. Good morning, sir. To the Uncle Yori, Good morning. what the guest is saying about the welfare of uh, officers uh, is true. They need to, their service conditions need to improve. But in all honesty, that is not the reason for the massive oil theft. Uh, let's look at figures. Before Tantita Security Organization was engaged, Nigeria was now producing less than 1 million barrels in a day. In fact, we were 850,000 barrels in a day. As at end of August, 
and Twitter because of anti-tax intervention, Nigeria rose to 1.6 million barrels a day. That is to say, there has been an improvement when Antita came in. And what do you see? During the period Antita has been in, in, on, on the security operations, you see the military chiefs fighting with him. They don't want him to intervene. If, somebody, if, if you have a system that is bringing results, why should that be a fight? And Uncle Yori, don't forget, on several occasions, when Santita arrests ships, shiploads of crude oil, the military men themselves will be the ones to disclaim it. On one open location, they bunch the, the ship together with the crude that was seized. Up to now, nobody knows who brought in that ship and where the crude oil, what quantity of crude oil was destroyed. What are we talking about? As an ordinary Nigerian, I'm only interested in making sure that the oil that is lifted is of benefit to we common people. But the military cannot claim that they have been protecting us or they have been protecting our interest in that regard. Uncle Yuri, there is no single individual or an ordinary person that can bring in sheep and loot our crude in the high seas. It is the handiwork of well-placed people. Truth must be told. That's why I agree when you were talking about the connection of politicians. And they are connecting together with the military chiefs. Those boys, those uh, junior officers that are sent to the creeks, they are not the ones. But they, are, they take directives, they take instructions from their bosses. And that is why you see that the, theft, the oil theft is going the way it is going. Okay. Somebody suggested that the president should go to the creek. The president cannot go there by himself. He doesn't have that time. He has to send people to go and verify. And he's doing something. We should uh, give him the opportunity to do something and we will see better results. That's my, that's my view. Thank you very much for calling in, uh, Mr. George. Uh, as you can see, Engineer Nuruddin, uh, there's quite a bit to unpack there, but let me do a quick break. We'll be right back, and um, we'll continue with this conversation. Stay with us, please. Every major news story is with many perspectives and layered with different levels of impact. Hello. What time did this happen? We will be right there. At TV's News, we follow the big and major news, gathering the facts, witnessing the outcome. I am here live at the aftermath of the approval of a new national minimum wage. We are TV station of the year, not just for breaking news, but for being first, fair and accurate. TVC News, first with breaking news.